So now I'd like to introduce you to Jackie Bowen. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everybody, so you can see I'm talking about 10 quick tips for content creation and I have a few different things going on, but one of my main websites is eslspeaking.org. I used to be an ESL teacher in South Korea for 10 years and I started a blog and wrote some books and that's kind of how I got into content creation. So I come at this from not a developer pers uh, perspective. I was just mentioning I took a class in basic computer programming and I was a bit lost after like the first month. So that is not who I am, but I like creating content and I use WordPress websites to do that. So you can find my email address there. Feel free to send me an email if you have questions or thoughts, anything I'd love to hear from you. So the first thing, so for content creation, write about what you know. It seems obvious, but some people try to start websites about things that they're not really an expert in. That's much harder <laughs> to do, obviously, than just talking about what you know. So you can leverage your expertise. So you may have heard Google with the EAT, expertise, authority, trust. So Google will rank your web pages higher if you have expertise and authority in your subject matter and people trust you. They've recently added an extra E, experience. So just a quick example of that. If you're writing about something in the medical field, if you're a doctor or nurse, Google will love it. If you're just some random person writing about like medical things without really any expertise or authority in that subject matter, they're not gonna like what you're writing. And so that comes through in the about page. So whatever um, expertise you have in that field, certifications, stuff like that, if you put it into your about page, um, that's kind of a signal to Google that you know what you're talking about in that subject matter. So the next thing is find your voice. It's easy to just turn out generic content. Very easy, actually. You can use chat GPT, another AI, you can pay someone to do this. But there's a million other pages like that out on the internet. So if you talk with your own voice and you tell a story and are personable, people will love it. It will be engaging content and people will keep reading it. So I think it's obvious when you go to a website, if you click on it and then you read for about the first you know, 10 seconds, you can say, oh, like a real person wrote this and you wanna keep reading. Or some content factory churned this content out and it doesn't have anything unique or interesting or helpful, really. So people can tell. So very important. So chat GPT and paid content writers for your own personal website or your company website, whatever. I mean, it does have a place, but make it personal. Don't just like get that content from some agency or throw in a few prompts to chat GPT and then put it up on your website. Um, it may rank okay, but people aren't gonna love it, Google's not gonna love it, and you'll never be actually truly successful by doing that. Okay, so number two. If you are out of ideas for what to write about, this is what I hear about all the time when people have you know, like a blog section on their company website or whatever, it can be years before it's updated. So I always check because I'm curious about what people are writing about. And sometimes it'll be like two or three years old. So if you're out of ideas, you can spy on the competition. This is actually the best way. So you can use some keyword research tools I use Ahrefs, um, I pay like 100 bucks a month for it, but there's also some free things out there, but I'm gonna show you the demo with Ahrefs just because it's what I use and what I know best. So, just a sec. Okay, so here it is, so let me just sign in. Okay, so my competition, who is your competition? So for my main website, ESL Speaking, I talk about like ESL speaking activities, ESL speaking games, ESL grammar activities, and on and on. So I'll put in the, one of the main keywords, so ESL speaking activities. And then I will just see what comes up. So there's this website, Fluent U. So I'll check that one out. And then I'll just take the main URL, so fluentu.com, and I put it in, and let's see what happens. So. So they have 1 million organic keywords, 2.3 million organic hits a month. So people searching in Google will find them 2.3 million times, which is a massive amount of traffic. So I am like, 
I don't know, one one thousandth one one thousandths of them. So it might be difficult to compete against them, but there may be opportunities. So let's see. So I look in, if you look at organic keywords, this section right here, you'll get one million of them. It's too many, it's a bit overwhelming to try to figure out. So instead, I look at the top pages section. So, so I scroll down here, and then I can see this easy English short stories. So that gets almost 90,000 hits a month from organic searches in Google, which is a lot. So let's see. So I'll take that page. I'll put that into Ahrefs again. And then in this case, I'll look at the organic keywords for that specific page. And then you get a list of keywords. So I know on my website, I haven't really covered simple English stories, English story reading. I don't really have pages for that. I might have pages before that, but in my case, I don't. So that might be an opportunity, but what I look at mostly is the keyword difficulty. So the KD, and then I look at the volume as well. So the keyword difficulty, if it's rank, if it's maybe like around above 30, I know it's very hard to compete for, and chances are that I will not end up on the first page, just kind of being a small website. Some of the bigger people could compete with them, but it would be quite difficult for me. So I look for keywords that are under 30 for difficulty. Even if it's under 10, it's even better. So here's one example. Easy English story writing. So let's see. So this page has stories to read but they haven't talked about story writing. There's nothing on that page. So easy English story writing, and the keyword difficulty is zero, and they have a search volume of 6.1 thousand. So I know that's actually a big opportunity. If I write a page on my website about how to write an English story, I could actually rank probably like number one within I don't know, like a month or two. If the keyword difficulty is zero, it's actually quite possible to do that. So let's keep looking. Oh yeah, here's another one. So own story in English, keyword difficulty of five. So that can maybe be a secondary key, uh, keyword. How to write a story in English, how to write my own story. English writing story, uh, English story. So. This page has really not covered anything about how to write your own story. So that's, um, yeah, so that's kind of how I use the competition to kind of see what's happening. So let's see, there might be more. So English books, maybe this how are you ESL, let's see. So this is a page about how are you reply. So that's the keyword difficulty is a little bit high for that, so that might be difficult, but I'll scroll down. How are you ka? I don't know what that is. It's probably some other language, but I could check it out and see. I don't know. I'm sure it must be like a different kind of slang in some other language probably. But let's see. Oh, here is a couple. How have you been? So sometimes I'll look if they, how have you been? So in their article, they only mention it one time, just as kind of an aside. So I could maybe write a page on my website about how have you been, reply. There's 9,000 organic searches and a keyword difficulty of four. So that's actually some kind of keyword gold right there. If there's that much volume, and the keyword difficulty is so low. So this will take you, maybe if you spend about an hour doing this, um, I know it looks easy when I do it, I've been doing it for many years, so it might take you a little bit longer, but you could probably spend like an hour and come up with a list of say, like even like 10 or 20 or 30 um, ideas for pages to write. So this is only one website, but I would look at some of my other competitors as well and kind of see what they're doing as well. So I'd look at two or three different sites come up with a spreadsheet of um, article ideas and you'll never run out of things to talk about, actually. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I just mentioned do better. So 
a lot of times pages will rank for keywords that they haven't optimized for. So that one page said, how have you been doing only one time? So if I optimize for that keyword, I will do better than they're doing, most likely. Okay, so number three, when you are writing content, think about the purpose. What is the goal of content that you put on your website? So give me some ideas. Why do you put content on your website? Yeah. To attract the right clients. Okay. To get indexed by Google. Yep. To get them to take an action, like call in or book an appointment. Call to action, okay, yep. To give people the actual right answer to the question. Helping people, okay. <laughs> so education. Making money, okay, so whatever that looks like for your company or business, making money, yeah. Try to? Authority. Authority, oh yes, build authority. One big one is email subscribers. That's a huge one actually, that, yeah. That's the goal of mine, so my goal I have some books um, on Amazon, so my goal is to sell books and then also to um, get email subscribers. So those are kind of my two things. It looks different for whatever your company is, but think carefully about the goal of your content. So when you're putting something up on your website, think about why. Have a purpose and a goal behind it. If you just kind of put random content up there, you're not gonna do that well. Um, people will come to your website, they'll be a little bit confused, they won't actually know what they're looking at, why it's there, why your company's talking about it, so think about it. And optimize your content multiple times. So this is something that I did for years. I would spend all this time, I'd put up this page, I would spend like the whole day writing it, it would be kind of a masterpiece. And then I would leave it there for, I don't know, six years, whatever, eight years. and. You know, like even six months later, it's out of date. Because these days when Google is returning search results, they put a date on it. So people can see how fresh your content is. So you need to optimize it multiple times. And by optimizing it, I don't mean just changing the date and leaving <laughs> it as it is. I mean actually optimize it. So for example, fluentu.com, and that example that I gave about how have you been doing, they could go into that page and optimize it, put a little paragraph, um, covering that keyword, they could change the date and they would probably start ranking, probably like on the first, you know, like they'd be doing well. They'd probably rank in the top three for that keyword if they optimize for that, which they obviously haven't, but they should be. I'm surprised they haven't actually for such a big company that they haven't gone in to, you know, because like that page gets so many organic hits, but it could get more. So I'm surprised they haven't optimized their top page actually. And then split tests. So Split test is when you serve different versions of kind of the same page to different people and then seeing what converts more highly. So this would be like if you're looking for clients and you want people to fill out a form or you want to get like an email subscription, something like that, you can do split testing. So this is only if you have the resources and expertise, which I do not. Um, beyond the most basic like email subscriber form, which is easy to do. It's easy to optimize that yourself. But if you have the resources and expertise to do this, if you're trying to get clients and say your website converts at 2% versus 10%, that could be a huge difference in your bottom line. So it can be worth it for some people to spend money and time and effort on this. So if I had all the money to pay someone, I would do this for sure, but I do not. So. Um, yeah, so big opportunities there for sure. Okay, and then once you write your content, you have to promote it. So this is almost more important than anything else. So you can spend time and money. Some people do paid promotions, some people don't. Um, I mean, it's really up to you and how big your company is or how big your website is if you want to do this. But if you're gonna spend money, then have some key performance indicators, KPIs, and actually check the results of the money that you're spending. You can throw away a ton of money on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, all those social media platforms, and not actually get conversions or get anything that will make a difference to your bottom line. So be careful with spending money, for sure. And your email list, so you can pro uh, promote content in your email list. Social media, so promote everything on social media and do it more than once. Everyone has, you know, certain times they're on Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram or whatever. So you can promote it even like five or six times at different times of the day, different days of the week, on the weekend, on the weekdays, 
all that. Don't be scared. People don't get annoyed if they see something more than once. Not at all. And then you can put in some internal backlinks from your top pages. So if you have some top pages on your website, if you put links to kind of pages, like new things that you want to rank, Google will, um, you'll pass, it's what's called some link juice, I guess. So you'll pass some like, kind of trust or authority or, I don't know exactly what to say. It's a bit of a fuzzy term, but you'll pass something from these top pages to the other pages that you're doing. And um, Google will crawl your top pages more often on your website. So if you put a link to kind of your new content, they'll start crawling that new content more quickly. You can feature your new content on your homepage. So on your homepage, um, I would put, don't put every single link on your website. That's a bit overwhelming and it's hard for Google and it's hard for people to tell what the most important pages are. So you can put the most important pages on your homepage and then I'd put some of the new content as well, just so people will actually go there and check it out and you'll get some visitors to your new pages. And then there's things like medium.com, which you can kind of like repurpose um, content and put a link back to your original post. Um, I would a little bit caution against just like copying and pasting. I wouldn't exactly want to have all that duplicate content out there on the internet. Um, Google doesn't really love it, but you can put like a shorter form or kind of an alternate form of that article somewhere like medium.com with, with the goal to send people back to that original page. Just say like for more information, check out the full blog post or like something like that. Guest posting, I mean, I feel like you can spend so much time and money doing guest posting campaigns, so trying to get your information related to an article on other websites. Um, if you have the time and resources and motivation to do this, then um, go for it, but um, you can spend a lot of money and a lot of effort doing this and not necessarily get um, a ton of great results, so use with caution. And then Google Search Console. So if you put up new pages on your website, if you're, uh, like Google will find those pages. If your website is kind of popular and kind of a bigger website, Google will crawl that website a lot. But if you have a very small kind of obscure website, you can put the new uh, URL into the Google Search Console and it's like adding a page to get indexed or whatever. So I'd recommend that for smaller sites because Google may not actually find your new content quickly. Okay, and then you can add life to old content. So you don't always need to create new things. Um, this is actually super valuable. I do this probably about 50% of the time. I'll add life to the old content and then I'll spend about 50% of my time creating new content. So I'll do a demo for you. So I'll put in my own website. So you can see I'm getting a bit of keywords and traffic, but not nearly as much as Fluent U. Anyway, that's fine. So in this case, I would go to organic keywords. And then you can check what countries get the most traffic. So the US gets the most traffic. So I would optimize for the US market. So in this case, I can do positions five through 15. So if you rank number one in Google, you get something, there's like percentages of the traffic you'll get. It's something like 50% of people click on the first one, 30% of people click on the second result, 10% of people on the third result, and then by the time you get to number nine or 10, it's like 1% or 2%, and nobody actually clicks on the second page result, so it's like point whatever, 0.1% or whatever. So these keywords ranking five to 15, Google obviously doesn't mind them. They think it's okay, content, and it's, but nobody's actually clicking on it because it ranks too low. So if you can push those keywords like up to number one, two, or three, you can actually see some really big gains. So some big opportunities exist. So uh, positions five, uh, five to 15, I still have 2,000 keywords. So that's too many, it's a bit overwhelming. So let's look at the volume. Maybe I'll do a volume of 200 to infinity. So this is monthly volume. Let's see how many results. Okay, I still have 173 keywords, so that's kind of a lot as well. So maybe I'll do keyword difficulty. So from zero and then a maximum difficulty of 30. Let's see. 147, okay, that's still quite a few. So maybe I'll do keyword difficulty zero to 20. So that makes it even easier to rank for those words. Okay, 118 is not bad. So. 
I'll look at the things. So for this one, funny controversial topics. These are pages on your site that are already ranking? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the, oh, this one actually, strange, is ranking number one. Anyway, ignore that one. So math riddles for middle school is ranking, it was ranking number five, but it's number three right now. But math riddles for middle school, I've already optimized for that keyword. So that's like if, the, like if I put the URL as that keyword, that is my main keyword, 100%. So I mean, I probably have included it in the article numerous times. So that's kind of a difficult one to really improve that much, that keyword, so I'll kind of skip that one. But let's see, and then same with like Halloween idioms, Halloween idioms. I've already optimized for that one, so let me find one that I haven't. Ah, uh, here's a good one. So, would you rather food this or that food questions? So I have not optimized for would you rather questions. I've optimized for this or that questions. So if I go into that page, that could be an opportunity to rank for both of those things, this or that, and would you rather, and it's a very similar thing. Let's see. And so then if I have something like silly debate topics, I've optimized for funny, controversial, good. I may not have optimized for silly debate topics. So that might be an opportunity there. Yep. So would you, the hot potato game, you wouldn't do that, that because it has like high volume, 13. Yeah. I have, yeah, it does. I have actually optimized that like a okay. thousand times and it's like, I'm, I have this like hot potato game for like ESL students, but that hot potato game is just ranking for hot potatoes in general, the hot potato game. So it's like, I've tried, I've tried my best, but it's like, <laughs> I struggled, I struggled with that one. I was like, oh, there's such an opportunity. And then I like did it, but it's like people go to that page and they're like, oh, what's this weird ESL game? It's not like <laughs> actually the hot potato game. Okay, and then, oh, here's another one. So where was that? Um, Oh yeah, so TEFL vocabulary games. On my website, I generally say things like ESL vocabulary games. So TEFL is kind of a, just another acronym that I may not have optimized for actually. So I could go into that article and add some things. So that's kind of how you find the high value keywords. So once you've found them, what can you do? So I would add an H2 or H3 with that keyword that you want to optimize for, then add a paragraph. So add some content related to that keyword. I would add some keyword variations. So for example, let's do that Halloween idiom. So just put it into Google. And then you can see down here, this is quite helpful, related searches. So I could throw in some Halloween idioms funny, Halloween idioms and phrases. I may not have optimized for any of those things actually, but that's people are also searching for those things. So this is useful. A lot of people don't really notice it down there, but I use this all the time for sure. Okay, and then um, I would add some FAQ, at least one of them that is related to that keyword that I wanna optimize for. And you can use the structured content plugin if you're not a developer. Um, I do, I don't really love it because I think it slows down my website, but anyway, you can like figure out however you want to put FAQ schema into your website, whatever method you use for that. This is kind of the easy way. I would add an image with that keyword I'm optimizing for as the alt text. If you use, just on WordPress, you can enter your alt text. Make sure you don't forget to do that, so put that keyword in there. And I would change the publish date, but only change the publish date if you actually change something on your website. Don't just change the published days because I think Google is smart enough to say like, oh hey, this person is trying to like scam the system a little bit. So if you change it, change the date, then promote it again. So do the whole cycle, promoting it on social media and all of that. And then I would add an internal link from another page on your website, linking to that new keyword that you've optimized for. So at least once or twice I would do that. Does that make sense, I hope? Okay. Is using the internal tags and categories inside WordPress enough to do that linking or do you need to actually create an official one? I don't know about like the tags and categories and stuff. Um, I don't use a ton of tags on my websites because I found that I was starting to rank for some of those tags when I didn't necessarily want to. I wanted to rank for the page actually. I didn't want people to go to some like weird tag page, tag page yeah. of like filled with kind of not exactly what they were searching for. So I think about search intent and my search intent is not for someone to come to a page with tags 
on it. It's for them to actually go to the web page that's answering their question. So it might work, but you don't go that way because, yeah. yeah. Others may disagree, but yeah, I don't personally use a ton of text. Gotcha. Yeah. OK. All right, so for content, just a quick word about hiring someone to write. If you have more time than, or more money than time, I mean it's maybe possible. So you can use like Upwork, Fiverr, you can have a full-time, I've had a full-time person that was writing for me, someone in Canada who just wrote all my articles. Um, so you can do like a bunch of different things. Um, but whatever you do, don't go on Fiverr <laughs> and pay like $6 or whatever to do it. Um, you're not gonna get good results. So if you go somewhere like Upwork, I've done it before, so I've hired I think like 10 people at a time and I've given them um, templates for the kind of blog articles I wanted and I've given them kind of a one you know, article trial and then out of those 10 people, maybe eight of them obviously didn't do a great job so I would kind of fix up those articles and put it on my website and not worry too much about it but there was one or two people who were always kind of like a cut above the competition and I would end up hiring them. I'd give them 20 more articles to write or whatever. So um, you kind of have to wade through lots of people, but if you're gonna do that, it takes some effort and some time for sure, but it can be worth it, but you have to like find the good people. And often you'll get back kind of like bare bones things and you still have to make it personal. Don't just put it straight up on your website without actually putting your own like personal story, your own voice in it. You can get a thousand words in up, Upwork for something like 20 USD, I don't know, but it's not like amazing content. It's, and now I would almost just say they're probably using AI to write it. Um, so you can maybe just skip the step of hiring someone and use AI yourself if you want. I think there's a presentation later about it, but um, even with AI, you still have to make it personal. And if you say like write a blog article about whatever, you're gonna get back almost nothing, but if you, um, use headings and say like write 100 words about this and then write 100 words about this so it still takes some effort um, so this might actually save some time and money as opposed to hiring someone who's going to do that for you if you want to do that so um, I don't know I kind of waver back and forth about hiring people if I have my own employee I will um, get them to write articles but if I don't then I will generally just write them myself so I don't actually love hiring um, people to do this but you can also repurpose content so um, a podcast is a nice way to connect yeah um, oh I just use chat GPT that's the one I'm familiar with so yeah I'm not sure about the options yeah besides that so um, yeah, repurposing content. So a podcast is a nice way to connect with people and kind of a deeper level. Um, YouTube. So I take all the top pages on my website and then I make YouTube videos. So I have an employee who does this for me. I'm not actually good at that. So that's why I hired someone to do it. So she um, comes to my house and we film videos and then she does all the post-production and uploading and all that um, kind of thing. And then on those videos, put a link to your article 100%. So that is the key. So you want to kind of funnel traffic from your YouTube channel to that page. And Google will love it because it's like directly related to each other. So you have this video that you put a lot of time and effort in. You have this article you put time and effort in. They're both kind of linked to each other. You can put the video into your page. Um, so that's kind of some gold right there if you can do that. But don't spend the time and resources to do pages that Google doesn't love. Only do it for say like your top, whatever, 10% of your pages on your website will be worth it. The rest may not be. And if you're getting search traffic from Google on your website, you will get search traffic from Google on YouTube as well. So it's very similar. Uh, you can write a book. Um, you can often read, this is actually how I got started writing books. I had a popular website about teaching in a Korean, uh, Korean university and I was the only one talking about it at the time. This was like 15 years ago or whatever and um, people would always ask me questions about how to get a uni job in Korea because it's one of the best ESL teaching jobs out there and so I wrote a book about it and I took down all the content off my website and then when people would ask me questions I was like oh like oh I have a book it's two ninety nine on Amazon or whatever and that's, yeah, that's how I got started so I mean it's possible to do, so Amazon KDP. And then um, if you have a book, you can also put a link back to the web page. So 
The key is putting it up top, so if people do the preview in the ebook version on Amazon, and there's a link back to your web page, they don't necessarily have to buy the book. They can just see the preview and then click on the link through Amazon without buying it. Uh, you can do a lead magnet. So if you want to get email subscribers, um, yeah, just offer something of value and people will give you their email in exchange for that. You can do Medium, another thing, but put a link back to that original content. SlideShare, put a link back, etc. So there's a million different ways if you're putting time and effort into making this content. There's a million ways to actually repurpose it and turn it kind of into something, something else. So number eight, original content is king. Original research, roundups, case studies, who can do this? Likely you. It's hard to pay someone to make this kind of like high level content, but this is actually what people love and what people want when they're going to the internet. So, I mean, but you have to be an expert in that subject matter that you're talking about in order to write this generally. And it does take some time and effort, but if you're gonna spend time and effort and money, this is what I would spend time on. All right, number nine. So keyword cannibalization is a real thing and it's a big problem on a lot of websites and a lot of people don't even know what this is actually. So what is it? It's when you have a web page that's ranking more than once for the same keyword. So maybe on my website I have say three pages that are ranking for the same keyword. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Google doesn't like it. So for example, maybe I have um, like ESL grammar activities, and then I have an article about ESL grammar activities. I have an article about ESL grammar activities for teens, ESL grammar activities for kids, ESL grammar activities for adults. I would have four pages ranking probably for ESL grammar activities, but um, none of them will actually do well because Google is confused about which page to actually rank for that keyword. So it would probably be better to do one main page, ESL grammar activities, and then put subheadings for kids, for teens, for adults on that same page. So I would do regular content audits yearly at minimum. So let me go back to my page. So you can go to, um, actually let me just start over. So it's easy to find in a tool like Ahrefs. So go to organic keywords, and then underneath this filter thing, you can do multiple URLs. And then you can see, let me see. Let me find a good one. So this one here, hot debates topics. So I have this page, hot debating topics. Then I have this other page, funny, controversial, good debate topic. So they're quite similar. However, this one is ranking number 15, this one is ranking number 20. Uh, neither of them are doing that well for that keyword, probably because Google thinks I have multiple content or I'm trying to rank twice for the same keyword. So what I would do, hot debate topics, this is obviously the one I want to rank, the number one. My URL is hot debating topics. So I would leave that, but then on the second one, I would delete any word hot, 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 hot. I would delete, delete them all, and then hopefully I will start to rank more highly for this one, and hopefully this one will drop off from that keyword. Okay. So, okay, I'm gonna move on. I just got the five minute warning. So anyway, do a content audit, and make sure that you're not ranking twice for the same keyword. What to do, you can remove the keyword, so that example I gave you is very simple, or you may want to delete some posts and redirect, especially if one page is getting zero traffic. Um, it's not a bad thing to do that, yeah? you take the content from the getting post and, and integrate it with the Sometimes, delete? yeah, sometimes I've just cut and pasted. It kind of depends on the situation. Other times, if it was just crap content that I had from like years ago, I just will delete and like forget about it, so yeah but don't be scared to like delete pages that are getting no traffic and that are actually terrible. It's actually hurting your website more than helping your website. All right, let's get technical. So technical SEO is not really my 
expertise, but here's a few basics of it. So I would put the main keyword that you're trying to focus on, say four to five times per 1,000 words in that web page. And then I would use two to three related keywords, maybe each two or three times per 1,000 words. So optimize for the main keyword, but then also put some keyword variations. So for example, ESL grammar activities, I might use TEFL grammar activities, I might use ELL grammar activities, so all the kind of different acronyms. So whatever that is for your industry. And then um, Matt Diggity, he's kind of the king of SEO. He calls these things the three kings. So the title, the SEO title, and the URL. So he says to put slightly different variations of your keyword, uh, like, an, like in each of these. So not exactly the same, but a little bit different. So if you use something like Yoast SEO, you can easily put the title and then the SEO title can be different as possible. Or if you're a programmer, you could do the same thing as well. I would put the keyword as the image alt text. Use short paragraphs. People do not love walls of text, so this is just something to keep people on your page longer. They do not like walls of text and they'll just click away um, within seconds. And use liberal use of H2 and H3, and H4 is kind of getting too small and most people don't really use, so organize your content by H2s and then kind of subheadings as H3s. This will help Google and people to understand what your content is about. Okay, let's get technical, part two. If you make a YouTube video your own, if you're not just like cutting and pasting from someone else, but make your own YouTube video about that content, Google will love it. Put internal links to the content and then also from the content. So I think of it as kind of this like strong spider web. So if there's like links everywhere on your web page, it's a strong website. If there's just one page that has no links to, no links from, it's an orphan page, it's not strong at all and it probably won't rank. So you just kind of want to send people around your website. You want Google to understand how content is related to each other on your website and you do that through internal links. So. I always will have a, some related posts. I say, oh, if you like this, please check out this post, or a call to action. So maybe the goal of your content is to get a conversion, to get an email, um, to sell a book, whatever. Don't forget a call to action. So people, you want people to do something with your content. A thousand plus words, usually. It's not a hard and fast rule. Some questions are very simple to answer, and you can maybe do this in fewer questions, or like fewer words. A table of contents, I don't always do this, but a lot of people do. You can get some plugins that will do this. Um, I kind of waver on that. I think it's like for user experience, it's not amazing, but I think it can help you rank more highly in Google. And uh, your meta description, so back 10 years ago, people used to stuff the meta description with all kinds of keywords <laughs> that were not even related to their content. So Google actually stopped using meta description as a ranking factor, however, the meta description, um, when people like search on Google, it's just the little, you know, couple sentences that people can see what that page is about. It can increase your click-through rate. So if you do it well, and put the main keyword, put some like keyword variations, people will say, "Oh, that's exactly what I want," and they're going to click on your website instead of just kind of some random check out whatever. <laughs> and it's just like it's not that helpful, and people won't click through. And then. Um, I would also put one to two outbound links, but don't put them to your direct competitors. So put, some, put them to something like, and like, uh, like maybe Wikipedia or the New York Times or like some big authority that's not really related exactly to what you're doing. Like on Wikipedia for all my ESL teaching and whatever, like English learning stuff, uh, like Wikipedia is not an education website for that kind of thing. So if I link to an article they have about something it's not like they're going to like start outranking me suddenly for that thing because it's not actually what they do. Okay. All right. Good. Finished. So, questions or comments? Any thoughts? Number yeah. Two, when the question's asked, yeah. just repeat it back so that we have it on video. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question about uh, alt tags and putting your keywords in there. Yeah. Uh, will Google not like it if your keyword and the picture don't exactly line up because the alt tag is supposed to be there for accessibility. So that would be, I mean, is it spammy to put your keyword all over the alt tags on the page? Um, I mean, kind of. Okay. But however, you, I would put a picture that actually does reflect the keyword as a way okay. around that. 
yeah, like I wouldn't necessarily just put some random picture and then my main keyword, but I actually would like, um, like how I do it is I go into Canva and then I kind of have some templates that I use or whatever. And if I want to rank, say for ESL grammar activities, I'll write in my picture ESL grammar activities and then have some people studying okay. English or whatever. So yeah, I make a related okay. picture, but that's easy to do. You okay. don't need to do like very different things. All right, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations for alternatives to H? A A Ahrefs. Ahrefs. Um, a lot of people free, free. Price. well this is $99 a month so I but I think you often get what you pay for and you can use um, there are some free ones like I think Moz has a free one maybe um, I have used them all in the past and I just stopped because it was kind of a waste of my time like you'll actually spend more time and if you're gonna spend a hundred dollars on something for your website, I would spend it on a keyword research tool and then an email um, management system. So $100 and maybe another $100 a month, those would be the first $200 I would spend if you're building a website, for sure. So yeah, I'm not an expert in that, actually, the free ones, so yeah. Um, on YouTube, um, you can get the keyword on the title, keyword on the description, keyword on tag, and also, uh, I guess, a hashtag something, right? Yeah. What else is uh, for YouTube, yeah, for YouTube, that's it. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, as you mentioned, um, you put the keyword in the title, description, and then the tags, and then, um, was that it? Yeah. Yeah, the hashtags. Yeah, so the hashtags, um, I use one or two general ones, like teaching ESL with Jackie or learning ESL with Jackie, kind of depending on what. Um, the video is, and then um, you can kind of see what the volume is for that keyword that you're optimizing for. If it's um, a high volume on the hashtags, I would use that. But if it's not, I would do something kind of related that probably has a higher volume on it. Yeah. But I would also mention the keyword multiple times in the description, not just once. And then also in the title, I'd put the main keyword, then I'd put the pipe thing it's called, and then I would put like a secondary keyword kind of related to that. So take up all that space and use it well. You the, use the, the hashtag in the title or hashtag in the description? Uh, like I'd use it in the description, not the title. Yeah, in the description. But I'd put like a main keyword and a secondary keyword in the title. Yep. Yes? Um, you telling us to have the first $200 we spend be on a SEO research tool and a mailing list management. Yes. That's the question, which ones do you recommend? Which ones? Um, well, Ahrefs, 100%, I recommend highly. Um, I know people do like Moz as well, so check out that one as well. What's that one called, sorry? Moz.com, M-O-Z, Moz. Yes. And for email, uh, I mean, I used MailChimp for many years, but I hate it, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually recently switched, and it was a big, I don't know, month-long, like, annoying project that I just did, so. What'd you switch to? I switched to this thing called MailerLite, which, I don't know. I mean, it's easier to use and cheaper. However, um, I'm not really getting the same click-through rates from my email to my website, which I'm not sure why. So that's it's kind of an ongoing problem for me. Um, I can recommend. Oh, yes, I'd love to know. Yeah. Well, ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign, yeah. those types. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's a regret that I didn't switch to one of them. Actually, I was. <laughs> anyway, you can yeah. Also use ones for WordPress like MailPoet. Like yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I actually regret using Mailchimp like from Mostly. years ago. So it's expensive and crappy, also. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. Um, for your ebooks, have you ever thought about just selling them on your website? Like, why do you do it on Amazon? Um, I mean, you can do that. There's like platforms that you can sell. Like Gumroad, I think, is one of them that you can use to sell things. And I mean, you get your own. You get all the commission or whatever. Like the Gumroad or whatever would take, say, five or ten percent, and then you get ninety percent. Um, I do it mainly on Amazon and I also sell them like Kobo and Apple Books and Google Play, like all the places, because they have trust behind them. 
Um, when people go to Amazon, they already have their credit card info and they already are used to buying things on Amazon, so it just reduces the friction between someone clicks on a link on my website to one of my books and they go to Amazon and they know what Amazon is and they're not gonna get scammed and Amazon won't steal their credit card information and all that, so I think it actually just increases conversions. So there are people who do sell it through their own website. Um, that's certainly an option as well. I just have chosen the other road, so. Yeah. Oh, one more question, okay, and then time up, yeah. Yeah, just thinking about keyword cannibalization, it's yeah. interesting. And um, wondering if you generally advice with blogs to write more and have more content so you have more links. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like with that, maybe you just want to have focused content that is just on the keyword that you're trying to optimize for. Do you find that you keep wanting to write more and your site grows over time, or are you trying to focus on just a few keywords and write better content and cut articles off when you're adding with it? Uh, that's a bit of a tricky question. It was about like adding more content or just kind of focusing on what's already there. Um, I generally will focus on what's already there and just optimize it until it's optim like uh, that hot potato thing. Like I can't optimize that anymore. Like it's already, I've done all that I can do. So once I kind of reach that point, then I will add another topic cluster. So the kind of the topical authority. So I think like, and like that whole debate topic thing, I had nothing on my website about that until say like six months ago and I saw other people getting a of volume and a ton of like um, a ton of hits from that so I was like okay I'm gonna go down the road of debate topics and then I wrote you know four or five articles about that I made some videos about that and did that whole thing so I if yeah like I would add related content if I was going to do that instead of just here and there and kind of like spread yourself too thin so related stuff is better yeah okay I think that is it for time feel free to Ask me questions or whatever after, and I'd love to chat with you. Okay. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank